Hi, this is a uh, this is a follow-on from um, a couple of short uh, tutorials that I did a little while ago on uh, on CGI compositing in Nuke. Uh, I've been asked to demonstrate on this particular example the inclusion of a, a shadow pass within this uh, composite. Uh, to be honest, this tutorial was part of a series of demonstrations that I did for students uh, to whom I'm a lecturer. Um, and when I did this, I pretty much wanted to focus on the car, so I didn't want to get onto the sort of the background side of this uh, of this particular. Uh, composite but uh, as it's been uh, requested I'm going to go through that process now. So the script is pretty much in the state where I left it we've got a series of, uh, of passes if I just bring these down we have a diffuse a reflection, a refraction, a specular and an ambient occlusion pass there um, and we did a variety of operations to it. We did a hue shift to change uh, the colour from a red to a green if I just uh, if I just disable that we can see the original colour. Uh, there's a couple of things on, on on here. There's a key light used to try and bring the terracottas out of the uh, out of the reflection there to mirror what's going on in the background. Um, there, and there was some blurring and mixing of the uh, and a little bit of a glow on the specular as well. So there was a little bit of, uh, of peripheral stuff going on down here. So this is unchanged. Uh, what I want to do is I want to focus on the on the background side of this now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my viewer off and just disconnect this for now and we're going to focus on the on, on the background side of the composite. This is this isn't exclusively the way to apply shadows, but this is a way that I like to apply shadows in this particular situation. So if we just take a look at this pass here, this is a shadow pass. Uh, just getting we can see this is the ground shadow um, we don't see anything in the in the composite window if I just flip over to the alpha channel you can see that there is data there and this is typically how uh, our shadow passes will appear occasionally they may be inverted and this may, may area may be appearing as dark with the with the rest of the area appearing as white um, but uh, but the principle of the composite would be exactly the same. We would just be inverting the process or we'd be using a slightly different blend operation when we when we merge over. So what can we glean from this shadow pass when we're looking at it through the alpha channel? Essentially what, what it's telling us is that everything that we see that is white or pure white um, is, is fully opaque. Anything that we see is pure black I don't think there's very much that's pure black looking at these values. Maybe right down at the bottom we're pretty much good moving towards pure black. Anything that's pure black is, is transparent. And then anything that is a shade of grey is a variation of opacity depending on uh, on how bright it is. So so over here, for example, where these shadows are, are leaning towards the white side of the spectrum, these would be more opaque than transparent, whereas these areas here where it's leaning towards uh, black, these would be on the uh, these would be on the invisible side of uh, of the of the equation. So that's essentially what this is telling us in its alpha alpha channel format, and that should be mirrored when we actually apply this over the background. So to do this, we can just uh, make sure that we've got this layer selected and just hit M to bring out a merge node, and we can see that the A pipe is going into the ground shadow, which is quite how we want it to be because we want to be putting the shadow over the top of the background. So I can put the B pipe into the into the into the background side now. And if we flip back over now from the alpha back to the RGB, we can now see the shadow in its position. It looks totally grotesque and out of uh, out of sync with everything else in the scene, but we'll work on that in a few seconds. Uh, but we can see the we can see the shadow at its darkest. This was the whitest area, so this is re this is registering as more opaque. And as we move out to these areas that are more trans that are, that were greyer in tonality, then these uh, these uh, represent sort of semi-transparency, and that's why we see more of the background through. Okay, there's a few things that we're going to need to do. We're going to need to color match, and we're going to need to and we're going to need to tone match this. Tone matching is quite easy. We can do that from within the merge merge node itself. This shadow over here is what I would be trying to match. Okay. So first things first. While we've got the merge open, we can just mix this down. So if I just bring this, now you can see if I bring this right down, then we we we're changing the we're changing the the opacity. We're mixing the the shadow back to the against the original. Uh, and clearly, we can go too far with that. So somewhere around about somewhere in this domain is probably tonally similar. We'll know better when we get the uh, when we start to make the color changes. But I'm gonna I'm gonna stick with that for now. So let's look at how we can perform uh, a color grade operation. So just try and tidy this up a little bit with a couple of dot nodes. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit C to put a color correct in here. 
and I'm just going to open up the gain and I'm just going to really crank up the blues and we can see that that workflow is pretty flawed but we'll hang with it for a second we can see that this is actually coloring the uh, co coloring the the entire composite so even though we're seeing some blue tones uh, appearing over our shadow we can see that it's also uh, accentuating the blue tones in the in the shadows and it's making a right mess of the background as a whole so in terms of matching it doesn't give us a solution because obviously we uh, we need to be able to compare and contrast the color between this and this and as we change as we change with the color creation not only does this change this changes also so we need to do something to stop that from happening. Okay, and the reality is, is that there's a very simple way of doing this. Um, I'm just going to actually get rid of that dot note from this side, and I'm just going to bring my um, I'm going to bring my my no tree down this way. So I'm going to branch off on this side. Okay. So the easiest way to deal with this, I find, is to actually use this pass as a mask. So if I bring out the mask port of the color correction node and just plug it into this pipe we're now using the alpha of the shadow pass to isolate the shadow to just the areas that are contained within the opaque, opaque areas of the pass so we can now see that this area is being unaffected if we again if we come back to this color correction and we start shifting it we can see that we're only changing now the shadow area okay so we can start to make some uh, we can start to, to try and match this color a little bit better now so you can see there that just by bringing some cyans in on that side uh, really I'm looking at this area and comparing with this area the darker area is going to be pretty much under the car anyway so that's not too bad I possibly just need to bring that mix on the on the merge just back up a little bit and you can see that at that kind of area we're not a million miles away from matched up okay and for the for the sake of the tutorial I'm prepared to accept that for now. So we're pretty pretty much ready to hook back up, then bring bring the car back in. So this is our our over merge. So we'll reconnect the viewer to this to bring our car back in, and we'll connect our B side of the pipe to our composite background. So we can see that what we've done now is effectively we've sandwiched the shadow mo mo uh, the shadow node between the background and the car by comping the, the shadow on top of the background and then comping the entire car on top of the background and shadow effectively sandwiching it in between and now we've got a plausible result we can now do some final grading operations to this so for example if I just uh, if I just bring down this merge a little bit because I'm I can put a grade node in there so I'm now performing a global color correct on the car before it comps over the background so I could now for example do some background matching so for example I could I can match the blacks so maybe take the uh, the blacks from the car and maybe just sample an area in there and the same with the whites take the whites and maybe match that little area there Okay, let's just turn the grade on and off and see the difference. Okay, it's minimal. Let me just re re grab that. Okay, I don't seem to be getting much of a selection there. Let's have another go. That's better. Okay, let's do the same with the blacks. So let's look at this now with the grade on and off. So we've made quite a difference there in terms of the contrast. I think I can bring up the gain quite a bit and lift it up a little bit. Okay, it's looking very sharp. You know, I could I can mess about. I can mess about and change this a little bit but the the, pre the premise here now is that I'm just making global changes to the car I can still go and make individual changes to different aspects of the car by coming into this side of the pipe and, um, and making individual operations there 
One thing I would say is it's really important that any adjustments that we're making onto onto the aesthetic or the the the, the view of our uh, our background should be made right at the beginning of this operation. So right so right at the beginning before we even get into comping the or certainly making color change operations to the car. For example, this uh, this key light that I did over here to kind kind of accentuate the terracottas in this shadow pass. Um, is very much based on the background in the state that it is so this is one reason why if I was going to make some color changes uh, to the background I would do this first and then everything that I'll be doing on this side would be matching to that so it's really important that we actually do any sort of pre-grading of background before we do anything else okay so I'm not going to do that now I'm going to assume that this is the background that we wanted to uh, that we wanted to use anyway we have a shadow over the background and under the car which is ultimately what we set out to achieve. We will, if we look at it, we've got something like a mix between this and this. Again, we can come back to our uh, we can come back to our merge here and just mix it back up a little bit if we if we want it to just be a little bit stronger and try and match it in there. So we can make tweaks now once we've got it in and eyeball it a lot more uh, a lot more closely. We could even um, we could even put blurs in at this stage. So for example, we could put a we could put a blur in here. Uh, again that's changing the whole background but again I can use the mass port and plug that in and now the blur is only affecting the uh, is, is only affecting the the shadow area so I could just use that just to soften that a little bit more anyway that's the end of the uh, of the short demonstration I hope you found it useful I hope you now sort of see the sort of the logic of uh, of the application of a shadow in this kind of composite okay bye